dude. How are you, my friend? Good. How are you doing? I, I love that orange wall. Oh, yeah. This, uh, this is the accent wall. <laughs> the rest is all gray. <laughs> <laughs> no, it looks a lot better. I've got uh, the style of a hotel room. But... Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, well, it helps, uh, helps pop, I guess, sometimes. <laughs> Where are you calling in from? I am in uh, Hudson, which is about a suburb of Cleveland. Oh, you're in Cleveland? Yes, yes. Very cool. What are, yeah. you, what are you doing today? What's your day looking like? A lot of pre-sale meetings and a couple of uh, engineering meetings with the team. So it's just, just about till four minutes ago, I was on <laughs> different calls trying to wrap up, so... Dude, that's how life goes though, right? Yes, it is. It is. For, especially for a smaller company, that's how it is. So. So how many people do you currently have? We had about 80, 80, between 80 and 85 people right now. So. Excellent. And you're the CTO? Yes. You're also uh, the founder, right? Yes, I am. <laughs> Tell me about this. How did you come up with the idea? Uh, so... Uh, I was I was doing my grad uh, grad studies at uh, Kent State. I can't, if you can't tell, I'm originally from India. No, I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, while I was doing my uh, PhD there, uh, I, I kept helping a lot of people, and I had a choice to either go into academics or I actually en enjoyed building stuff than teaching. So uh, I I kind of helped. Uh, help somebody build a software and he never paid me for it. I was a grad student. <laughs> and then he felt really bad. And a few months later, he actually got a, ma a big investor uh, to help him take that idea to life. And uh, he, uh, the investor said, you know, uh, let's, let's talk to the guy who helped you build the initial prototype. And if he shows up, even after the fact that you didn't pay him, that means <laughs> we can rely on this guy to build it out. <laughs> So I, for some reason, I met, uh, I met them both at uh, Starbucks and it turned out to be a very big deal. Uh, and I, that's how I got started. And I helped them build their product. It was, in, uh, it was a mobile uh, diagnostic lab, lab system that we built and it turned out to uh, be a four-year project. And then from there, I worked with a few consultants and then eventually just took, you know, bring quality and control to the project. I, I brought the team in. Um, the, uh, the idea was to build a products company, but uh, services were, you know, building software for others uh, and working with new ideas and people is what keeps getting a lot, a lot of excitement and a lot of energy. So that's, it kind of evolved that's from there. Awesome. So the company is called Taza, right? Yes, yes, Taza. All right, I'm so glad I got that because it's T A A Z A A. Yeah, it's a play on uh, the shorter version Taza. There, are, you might. There are some Lebanese restaurants with that name. I don't know whether you. <laughs> so I've seen the word Taza before. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, it means uh, fresh. Uh, in term, typically it's associated with fresh food and fresh ideas. So I took a play of that in many languages, including my uh, native tongue, which is Kashmiri and uh, Hindi and Persian and many other languages, it means fresh. So, you know, I kind of like the name, the domain was available. <laughs> so, so we went ahead and uh, it is also like for incubating ideas for other companies and our own uh, ideas. So uh, almost kind of think of it like an in incubator of ideas where we actually take ideas and you know, implement the technology to bring them to life sort of thing, so. So do you have, is it more of an incubator or more that you have clients? Like explain a little bit about the business model for Taza. So primarily it's, uh, uh, you know, we have clients who have uh, problems. These are typically, we, we love working with startups who have, uh, that has been a risk, you know, because startups are <laughs> invariably high risk, but we love working with them on uh, uh, their ideas and bringing those to life, but we also have traditional, you know, B, we are B2B clients anywhere between, you know, in the SMB market, mainly mid-size to small-size business, where we put together teams for them, and then that's how we, that's how we, that's how we manage our, you know, revenue. And then when uh, when we come upon a good idea, we try to incubate it for a while, 
then pitch it to investors if they like it and see uh, see something that uh, is there. Yeah, we would then spin that out as a separate company or something like that. So. That's real exciting. So you yeah. guys do all sorts of stuff for a bunch yeah. of different clients. You're you're like a really large development shop. Yeah, I mean compared to <laughs> compared to Cognis and others, we are like <laughs> a rounding error. But yeah, we are we we have been growing in the last five to seven years. We've been growing at a steady pace. Have got well, a passionate it's, team. Yeah. Yeah. To there's it's extraordinarily respectable to get up to you know fifty eighty people. That's that's awesome. That's you got past the the beginning part, right? Yeah. yeah. I and mean, that's like 99.9% of people don't get past that. So you're in that 0.01%. So there's a little victory celebration, but <laughs> there's a long way to go to those like 200,000 employees. That All right. Well, yeah, I, I don't know whether that's my aspiration, but, but <laughs> you know, uh, but yes, thank you. That's very kind of you to say. What's ex What are you really excited about? What's the next step for Taza? So there's a couple of areas. We are expanding into uh, newer areas of um, uh, in the in the technology space. We are we're working very closely with the uh, uh, with the company here in Cleveland. That's a that's that's a social impact uh, technology company where they're using AI and big data uh, to uh, make positive Im impact on individual outcomes. Uh, and we are then using actually blockchain to help distribute the uh, revenues. I, I know you must have heard this, <laughs> but, yeah. but, but this, uh, you know, we are really excited about that uh, to be able to work with them and support, uh, support their ideas. It's, it's, it's some uh, people who are ex IBM who, who, ha who sold their companies and uh, are individually very well to do, but they want to bring some social uh, uh, impact into Cleveland given, you know, it's uh, how how that uh, city is. You know, it's 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 got a very high po poverty rate, and opportunities are there are a lot of smart people, but I think the opportunities and the, the way the systems and programs are, uh, they nobody knows how efficiently they uh, they are run. What's the actual impact and outcome of these programs? And they want to they want to take large investments and put it, put it to good use with you know, bringing in government uh, programs and improving their efficiencies and actual impact. So that's a very interesting project that we're doing. We are also working on a couple of uh, uh, startups that uh, we, we had incubated uh, in, uh, in, in Taza, which have spun out and have got individual angel investments. So those are really keeping us, at least me, you know, busy, so. That's real exciting. The, uh... I'm out visiting in San Francisco this week. Oh, man. And, we're, and you're out in Cleveland. but So I'm out in San Francisco, and I'm visiting some of the past guests that have been on the show. Okay. And one of the guys I was speaking with, he was, he was telling me stories about how different customers use this product. Okay. And he's on the show. His uh, company is called Hologram.io. And they make these little chips that, like SIM cards. Uh-huh. So they build all the developer suite of tools and APIs and SDKs around the SIM card. So you can basically turn anything into a wireless device, right? And you've got one client that's using it for, they put them in drones and then they go into countries that aren't as uh, advanced. And what they'll do is they put the drones on these solar panel platforms so they can put them like in the woods, in the forest, and they place them between hospitals where it's geographically efficient. And then when hospitals need to transfer like blood or something to one another, the drone, they program it in, the drone boots up, flies over to the hospital, they attach the medications or the supplies or the blood, whatever it may be. And then that drone then goes and brings it to the neighboring hospital amazing the roads are so bad or really yeah. narrow and it or forever yeah, yeah it takes too long and so they just plant these drones around and then they have customer service here in the united states and they just remotely dial it they have an app that you know on their computer the customer support says okay this hospital needs this all right i'm sending the drone and then they ship the small items between the hospitals and it's cheaper than them paying for the ambulance to transport it. 
Amazing. <laughs> See, <laughs> it's insane. I mean, some of this, uh, it's really amazing. Like, I'm, I'm very, I'm a very, I, I, you know, there's a lot of uh, talk about what technology can harm humanity in terms of taking away jobs, but I'm, I'm a firm believer that it actually, if we use our ingenuity in the right way, we end up doing a lot more good than bad. <laughs> assuming, <laughs> assuming, yeah, <laughs> yeah assuming we keep taking. With- yeah, the um, CTO of Microsoft, Kevin Scott, That's and me. his his episode, I think it airs today or tomorrow. But the one of the parts of the conversation was he's very optimistic about AI, and that just is what you were just saying. You know, optimistic about using the technology to improve and help versus the whole you know tinfoil hat doomsday style. Right. Right. You know, you have to be optimistic. I mean, yeah, you have to be. I, I understand there are, there are some really heavyweights, including Elon Musk, who is very against uh, uh, AI. And he think it could, you know, maybe I'm not fully well versed on whether if we can actually get to singularity as <laughs> and self-awareness. But given the current state and we are using some of the machine learning tools in our daily uh projects we we try to bring in in more intelligence into our business apps for our clients to do more innovative things but we are way you know uh, way off then you know the what what the terminator net thing was so so i think and not only that i mean that's that's fiction but even from there's going to be uh some realignment of uh, uh the human workforce i mean I understand, for example, uh, the trucking industry is going to have a huge impact. But the reality is, do you really, is that a life that you want to sit in a, and drive for 5,000? I mean, humanity is going to evolve into, there's going to be some growth pains, I think. But overall, it's, it has, yeah, exactly. Look, you're, you're, we're not like primarily farming right now. Exactly. Like your family and friends aren't primarily planting crops and farming like those jobs have since gone away for yeah. the mass population and, and right. it, all, it happens every single year. I mean, we don't have manufacturing in the United States anymore. Like we did. We like, and, and it's the evolution. What do you just want to stop? So, you know, we don't want like everything. We, everything's just going to stay the same. Good luck, yeah. man. That's like That's you fighting the universe. That it has no, no. <laughs> no, we, just, we just, we just keep evolving. And uh, I understand that, uh, you know, we as a species are dominant on this planet, but you know, as space exploration expands and we we actually set up bases, maybe it's too futuristic, but uh, you know, not in our life, not in our lifetime. But it's going to happen. We'll, you know, uh, I'm hoping we become a multiplanetary species at some point. But uh, all that is going to transform what people are, you know, next generations are going to do. Like I have an eight-year-old. And he, you know, he amazes me with the kind of awareness he has. And an eight-year-old, I was totally not that. I was a, a stupid kid just trying to play on the street. But the, the newer generation is so much more already accustomed to, uh, you know, such advances in technology that uh, I think they will they will see better uses, which we we cannot unlearn and visualize. They would see things much more differently than what our generation sees thinks that so just one kid yes just one <laughs> yeah, i only have one too oh yeah uh, i cannot manage more than that my wife says uh you work too many hours uh, we could have another one but then you won't have time for another one <laughs> yeah well you're you're a founder so you technically have like 81 <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> that's how i feel <laughs> so that's amazing so are your your teams how many of them are in the United States, are they all in your office in Cleveland? Are they spread throughout the world? How is your organization structured? We have a split. We have about eight or 10 here in the US and the remaining are in uh, New Delhi, in Noida, India. So, and we continue to uh, grow both teams as, as, you know, as the revenue and opportunities allow us for. So we are, and, and, and in Ohio, we are bit split between here and Cincinnati and we have a few people working in Maine and few distributed employees so that's excellent now earlier you mentioned a couple different languages when when you were talking about um india so do, is it is there like a primary language because you said hindi and you said a couple other ones i didn't understand 
Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, it's me. Uh, you mean the word Taza? Uh, uh, you listed three languages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm from Kashmir, so Kashmiri is a language which is in the north of, it's one of the uh, areas of conflict the north of India where um, where that language is spoken and the word Taza means fresh there as well. So Okay. So, and then we have uh, a Persian I mentioned, which is, uh, which is the language of Iran and others. It's Turkish and other uh, languages, it means the same thing. It's about, I think, 20 or 30 languages put together. The word is the same, uh, meaning fresh. So it's universally, <laughs> universally, except English, of course. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm always very interested in a, because as technologists, we all speak technology, but then we all have differences. And one thing I don't hear a lot of people talk about is, you know, I have the unique uh, situation where I meet with CTOs that are all over the world. And so there's different items culturally, there's different languages, there's different styles of working, sure. all sorts of different human things. And so while it's always great to talk about like project management and all that stuff, I'm always really curious about the the culture and the people and and how life works is there so you said you have eight to ten here in the united states and then you have many more um in in what part of india delhi, delhi? the capital the new delhi yeah new delhi. yeah so what's life like in new delhi uh, it's very hard right now but so uh i think uh, I, I don't live there as much, so I, I would be speaking vicariously through what I hear from my employee, uh, you know, employees and partners who are down, uh, who are there. Uh, it's uh, it's it's a growing country, and there's a lot of a uh, lot of uh, in the last 10, 15 years after the markets in India were opened up. There's been a lot of economic uh, activities and development which has helped the country grow uh, the way it has economically, but that's also brought challenges with infrastructure and also uh, the government is still uh, evolving. I think they're getting better, but there's still a lot of corruption and uh, inefficiencies in the government, which are, and a lot of their rules are very archaic for doing business. So uh, that aside, day-to-day -day life from, uh, People work uh, in shifts, at least in our company, I'm, I, I don't speak, they, they work from like 11 a.m. They have a very slow start to the day. They, they like to have their, that's probably from the English where they want to have their tea and read the newspaper, start slow. It's not like the U.S. where we start our day at 5 or 6 a.m. They like to start a little slower, but they work late, much later into the night. That also helps with uh, having a significant overlap with our clients in the U.S. So I think uh, they have a much harder life than we do here in terms of the amount of hours they put in and the amount of time they get to balance family with, uh, with work. Uh, I don't know how to change that. I try my best to help them with, uh, you know, giving some complimentary time off and other things. But, uh, but, but that's there. There, there. There's a lot of focus on hard work there. Um, they have to make up for the cultural gap, the communication gaps, which comes naturally to. I mean, if you were working with a client, uh, you would understand their needs much quickly than they would, just just because of the language barrier and the you know, the different systems that are in place. So they have to work extra to get to the same level. And, you know, we have a very uh, committed and hardworking team. They, they work late sometimes and <laughs> on a release, release night they're working. So I don't know whether I'm answering your question uh, or not. It but sounds uh, good. I don't know. It sounds really good. It's useful information me. But I, I don't know when you were asking culturally, uh, you know, it's very hard for me to, pinpoint at things if you want if you would be more specific what what area you were trying to ask about i would try to answer that question <laughs> then go about around you know how often around. do you visit typically twice a year uh, once okay. once in august and once in december so typically i have uh, luckily i've been lucky that i have uh, a good uh, team of uh, passionate people my vp engineering is there uh, my ceo who who's also a, a partner 
and everybody else, they really help manage and keep everything flowing very well. Uh, so I don't have to go during initial years of setup. I went more often, but now uh, about twice a, uh, twice a year for you know a couple of weeks is uh, pretty much uh, what I do. And the rest of the time, you know, Zoom is our lifeline. We use this practically every day, like for thirty to forty ad hoc meetings, <laughs> video conferences, screen sharing, annotations. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it. It, it's it, and it works consistently. I mean, that's the biggest. We we used to use other tools, but we have converged on this. And you know, internally in the company, we use like Teams and Office three sixty five and stuff like that. So. Yeah, well, Eric. I think his name is Eric Sue S I U, or I don't know how to pronounce it, but he's the CEO of of Zoom. He's, uh, yeah, he's awesome. I'm I'm connected with him on LinkedIn, so I see his updates. Uh -huh. And he just won like. CEO of the year or some founder of the year. He, he won some cool award. Oh, but sure. I, but there is this girl there named Heather. And uh -huh. she is amazing. Like she's uh, their chief happiness officer. And I went to a conference and met her. Uh -huh. And we like did a Beyonce dance and turned it into a GIF. <laughs> on LinkedIn. Oh, amazing. Okay. I need to connect with you on LinkedIn and check yeah. it out. <laughs> She taught me how to do it. We were mm -hmm. doing an interview with her, and then at the end, she told me about like this, like the Beyonce dance. I'm like, "What do you mean?" And she showed me like it was just silly, but uh, we posted on LinkedIn. It got like ten thousand views. I was I was blown away. That's amazing. <laughs> I should see that. How yeah, did you get? How did you get into this interviewing <laughs> modern CTO thing? So I I wrote. I was doing due diligence, like looking at a lot of technology companies, mm -hmm. and then I ended up writing so that I could give people the writings instead of having conversations with them about different things that they should be looking at. And then that turned into a blog, which did well, which turned into a book. And then before I released the book, I started talking with CTOs about the content in the book. And then those conversations were really interesting because we were excited to talk about the content in the book. And then we turned them into a podcast. Okay, interesting. Yeah. I see that some, uh, is that Jake? Thank you, Jake. Thank you, thank you. I'll, I'll look at it shortly here. So. <laughs> oh yeah, so um, that's that's awesome. Yeah, so Jake, I'm, actually, I'm in San Francisco right now for this week, but Jake is in Florida with Jackie and okay. uh, Jake's the producer and then Jackie handles all of our PR and scheduling. They're a great team. Awesome. Yeah, we have a client in St. Petersburg. I love that. It, oh, you do? Uh, yes. Uh, one of our bigger clients, we do a lot of telematics and cameras uh, which detect road signs and driver behavior. It's a pretty comprehensive platform. We've been working with them for almost a year and a half. And they have they have large fleets, like 1,000, 2,000 vehicles in each of, each of their clients. So they're putting this new cloud-based uh, driver monitoring and live video tracking systems uh, into vehicles oh. and we are doing that project for them. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> that, what's their name? Uh, Zone Defense. They're a small company there, but they have they have manufacturing in China and they have, uh, you know, uh, clients in different uh, different parts of the country. Very, very uh, you know, uh, they're very hardware oriented, but they have that vision to build uh, build a pretty cool uh, platform. So nice. Yeah, my my parents they live in Saint Pete. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, yeah. it's like it's like forty minutes from like it's not a big drive at yeah. all. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We we're not. I, I don't know. There's between. They're closer to Saint Petersburg. I don't know where exactly they are, but it's not in Saint Petersburg, but it's right very close, yeah. close by. So. Yeah. I, There's so many cities. We just always use the big one. Big one. Yeah, the close by. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Like I tell people all the time, like oh, I, I'm from Tampa, like. We're 45 minutes south of Tampa, but it's Tampa. Yeah. And then Tampa yeah. like touches St. Petersburg. So you, right, right. yeah, it's, it's pretty great. So you have these engineers and it sounds like the way, well, let me ask you this. If you were to take a pie chart and slice up your day, what are the three biggest slices that you spend time on? Uh, talking to team leads is one, one part of the pie and then talking to customers is another pie. And then the third is uh, really talking to my uh, sales and marketing team or, you know, 
So in the in the talking to my leads and engineers, there's uh, you know there's usually you know if there's an engineering challenge or how do we approach a certain thing. Uh, or how did we try to experiment with a particular architecture, for example. We're pushing on a product idea, we're trying to push, uh, we're moving uh, on uh, into what we call, you know, the microservices architecture. We're trying to experiment with that a little bit. Uh, we're moving towards Docker on, as a standard and stuff, it being done on uh, one specific project all, all, and trying to improve our DevOps. So, so part of my time goes there. And then, then there's part of the time that goes talking to clients, whether it's existing ones or potential new ones. And that's where the ideation happens a lot. So, and then, you know, the rest is really uh, uh, internal reflection on the company and where we, are, where we should be and what, should, what are we doing right, what are we doing wrong. Uh, inter so internal reflection, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. Introspection, looking inside mm -hmm. things now. I yeah. think this episode will be sponsored by the San Francisco Fire <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's so interesting. They have, uh, I checked in the hotel, they have earplugs. Like when you... Uh, oh. Yeah. Cities are loud. I mean, you must uh, yes. be a little bit outside of... of Cleveland. Yes, Cleveland. We, we are about 35 minutes uh, south of... Uh, Cleveland, so we're technically a different city a suburb. We fall between Akron and Cleveland, and I, you know, I had I had some other partnerships that I had worked in the past, and that's why I kind of hung out in the area. Um, but we love it; it's quaint and quiet. We do have a resource shortage. We, I, I think, as we grow, we may have to move, but for now, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I in the town I live, it's it's quiet and it's nice. But there's a real shortage of, of talent. Of talent, yeah. man. Yeah, like yeah. In, in many regards, like yeah. in many regards, there's a big shortage of talent. Um, you have to go to the larger cities or mm -hmm. deal with remote, um, which you know. I just prefer. I want to be in a in a small. Yes. Amazing yeah. talent. Yes, that that that's the dream. So I'm like, how do I attract talent? To, like uh, we were interviewing for a uh, lead like a chief product officer kind of role. And I interviewed many people in the area, not the right fit. Uh, finally, I really liked uh, uh, a gal and she was from, uh, uh, she worked for Oracle and she's in San Jose. Imagine what I would have to do to make her move. <laughs> so it didn't work out. I mean, she was asking <laughs> way beyond what I could afford, but, uh, and rightly so, she was pretty smart and talented, but you know, the problem is the local talent is, uh, you know, uh, we're trying to work, uh, build a partnership with Kent State and Akron and Cleveland State. And we, we have found some good candidates, but they're still, uh, you know, young and raw. So we, we're still trying to develop those. And it's uh, it, all the really smart ones seem to just move to the Bay Area or the East Coast and, you know, so they create a huge vacuum of really good talent here. So. That's one of the, the conversations that has been recurring just all the time with us, you right. know, people saying talent. It's like you have the option to develop your current talent or, and then it's like every, all your talents at different stages. So like you said, you can get some of the, the newer, fresher people, but they're really raw. It takes a long time yes. to, to get it through. And then you have some people that are on your current team that you can improve and then the other options getting super expensive to people that are new. <laughs> yeah. So that, that and by the way, that's how it happened. Like when I started my first project, I first tried to scale here because I love to have my team with me because that's the best. If you can afford it, you have them all in the same office, you can collaborate and there's nothing that can beat that. That, and then that's what I tell you in my clients is this is the second best option. If you can afford to hire them and put them in your office, that's your best option for collaborative outcome. But uh, this is the second best option. And we try to mitigate those risks by Zoom and other tools which help you collaborate better. So I tried to scale here, but then uh, I got a call from the client and he said, I need 12 people. I'm like, how am I, <laughs> where am I going to get 12 people in like, less than 30 days. So that's when I had to reach, you know, reach out to my old friends from uh, India and they helped me um, build that out. So it's been, that's awesome. 
what sort of now have you come across any like content or any ways of improving not just like the technical skills but just improving like professional development for technologists so you can improve your current people Yes, uh, <laughs> there's a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, Howard Business Review books that I keep harping on uh, on my team. So, you know, what just from an expectation standpoint, from a cultural gap standpoint and wh what you can do as an individual for self-improvement. I don't remember the names. I'm sorry, but I can share that with you. At some point, there's a series of books on everything from emotional intelligence to communication to uh, uh, and this is what I'm trying to permeate in the team is, uh, you know, just because there is this uh, divide, the world is definitely getting smaller as well. Uh, in term, and you need to be aware, culturally aware of uh, what's happening here and uh, be able to relate to things. So to, uh, I don't know, again, I'm, I'm not sure even if I'm sometimes answering your questions, but, uh, but uh, you know, uh, in terms of uh, communication, I think, uh, there's there are books there's some coaching that we do and we have uh, uh, you know we have a set of people who work in human resources uh, who who work for international clients and they've traveled here so and one of the best things that we try to do is we are in, instituting a program where we're trying to get some of the more pe people who've been with us longer to travel to the US and spend anywhere between uh, four to six weeks or even longer, depending on what's possible to, you know, get accustomed, get to know the client get face to face. I think all that really helps with exposure, understanding and communication. So everything from on-site visits to uh, coaching and then obviously books and uh, we try to cultivate a lot of curiosity and so the problem with the with the books that i found well like i love the books and i've i've read them pretty much all of them <laughs> um, but there's a couple problems the first problem is that when if you read the whole book and you don't do anything with it you just forget it it's just exactly it's yeah, you, don't true. Have, you don't have actual experience it's like okay like you have to learn something and then do something to get excited. Right. Yeah, try it, try it. And then the second thing is it's hard, even when companies, like I talk to a lot of CTOs, right? Mm -hmm. and, and even when they offer things like education budgets or conference budgets, like 80% of the people don't even do it. That's true. Like That's it's like they'll pay, you can go to the conference and they're like, no, I don't want to go. They, they'll, <laughs> but then if you ask them, if you ask them, you know, do you want to improve? They're like, yeah, I want to improve and be better. And then it's like when it comes time to actually you know, book the ticket or go to the conference. And I, I do, I sympathize with a little bit because conferences, I don't think give you as much. Like, not, education. not these days. Yeah. No, these days, it's, it's fun talks, but like they give you new things to try. And it's yeah. like, I can't go back and lose six months on a project trying to implement this new theory. It sounds good, but you know, there's, it wasn't, wasn't very actionable. So right. I thought there was a lot of problems with the um, with the way that we develop our professionals. Other other industries have it though, like, like the sales industry. Mm -hmm. They have it, but it's all for salespeople. Yeah, uh, so uh, there. I mean, we have uh, you know, especially with the younger uh, or the people who are just a little bit more raw. They actually shadow uh, shadow the uh, shadow the main. Uh, a senior person for almost anywhere between one to three months, depending on where they are in their experience level. And they would pair with them and see the problems to some extent. And then we just throw them into the, <laughs> throw them to the wolves and say, go figure it out. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no, I mean, there are different techniques. We, we actually evaluate uh, what, you know, if somebody is a self starter, there's a slightly different approach. If somebody is more, uh, needs more direction and guidance and handholding. There's a slightly different discipline. approach. Yeah, discipline as well. <laughs> so uh, we try all balance between carrot stick to inspiration to there. There's a, a variety of uh, you know approaches that we take, and we don't want to be too pedant. You know, uh, 
we need to figure out what resonates with with the with the individual it's almost we need to see what works for them what 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 motivates them for some you know it's the idea of uh you know maybe traveling abroad or visiting a client in europe is pretty exciting so he has to work towards that for some some it is just their own uh intellectual curiosity which uh, uh you know they want to satisfy by saying that hey i'm the best in the company on this particular vertical or this particular idea or uh, yeah. for others it's for yeah so we it's it's still very uh, it needs more systems in place it needs more uh, uh, provable uh, the question is all these we things that we do we don't have enough data to say what's the best and most efficient way to get somebody from you know where we where they are to where we want them to be in an organization and what's that what's that uh, journey from you know yeah. whatever rookie yeah. to yeah. journeyman <laughs> yeah. so we do provide books and guidance but then i think the most experience anybody gains you know they do a lot of plural side they do a lot of uh, you know uh, one off projects but till they don't work on a project everybody has to go through that one brutal project which will uh, you know uh, set them for you know what how to deal with a uh, pressure how to deal with an upset oh, yeah. client yeah, yeah they got it exactly it's like watching you know my my daughter's uh, nine months old ten months old now and it's like watching her walk you know yeah. you gotta get up and fall down the first yeah you can read all about walking but till you don't stand up and try to do it exactly <laughs> you're well, not gonna do it i have a little bit of experience with this because because this is such a problem that all the ctos have i got about Two months ago, it just kept coming up every single show. So I said, all right, well, I'm a, I grabbed a couple of the CTOs that kept mentioning this and we got together and we've worked on a solution for it. And we actually are deployed in a number of companies right now um, with, a, with a solution for this. Oh, is that the leader bits thing? Yeah. I was it, just looking, uh, just before you hopped on, I quickly picked that your profile is looking at that okay yeah because we were, fr were frustrated because if i tell you to go read this book chapter 12 like i don't know what you did with it i mean you likely didn't read it or you read it and didn't do anything, it did anything it. about it the, the yeah. key is you know we we have certainly you know the four ex four four d's of execution and there's some really good books on uh, how do you actually get results and some some people who are already motivated and already driven did read it, but the ones who really I wanted them to, you know, act you them on. yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, that, I'm. I mean, the whole read versus actually is how the idea of the company also got started. I was like, I would love to one day do this, and I kept talking to you know different people, including my wife, about it, and she's like, you know, you got to if you got to do it you got to do it so it started that's how you just get off the ground and uh, you do it and then, then see what, what happens but yeah so at first so we, we we came up with the idea we deployed it in some companies uh and then we figured out what works best to get people engaged mm -hmm. that was that was the hard part like to figure out how to do it and so we ultimately figured out that it was challenges mm -hmm. so like every challenge is since challenges weekly and then you perform the challenge, which is actually an action that you perform, which is how you create experience. Because we only give you a little bit of knowledge. Like the whole, the video is three minutes. The entire experience is less than 10 minutes. But like you only get a little bit of knowledge and then you have to go do something with it. And then you make an entry into what we call the reflect DB of what you did with it. And so what that does is those are all the components required for the formula for experience. And so when you can actually watch someone gain experience week after week, and then they can see themselves watch it build up, that is extremely motivating. Interesting. I'll, I'll definitely take a look and see if... We haven't even announced it yet. So it gets announced. We're, produ we're releasing the Microsoft CTO episode today, this afternoon, and that's the first time we're announcing it on the podcast. Oh, okay. this is like behind the scenes information. We've been running in companies for two months now, but okay. it's uh, it's uh, something we haven't announced officially yet. Okay, okay. I just added it to my profile, and some people have seen it. 
Yeah, yeah, that's what I saw. <laughs> this yeah. next. And it says two months right next to it. I was like, okay, maybe a new venture that you're... That's well, we're upset about it. Like, I'm upset about it. I'm, I'm upset about the fact that, like, we... That I, I'm, I was upset at myself for, like, consuming so many books and then actually having a problem and not remembering, like, I don't have that any... Like, you can read everything in the world about how to you know, lift a barbell, but like the first time you go to, like, you have to lift it a hundred times to figure it out. Right. Right. No, so, I, I think, I think that that's what we learned with the, uh, you know, I led a lot of theory about like neural nets and how to set them up and then look at tensor flow, but till you don't actually apply it to a problem and right. actually try to build a model for prediction, till you don't get the aha. It has to, you have to do it to, to. And so the same thing's true for your technology leaders. The yeah. first time they have to deal with people being upset or missing, like all the, all the professional development stuff or all the leadership stuff, mm -hmm. you know, the first time you have to take a team that's down and build them back up, like you're like, all right, guys, do better. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like you have to try this stuff. You have to learn it. You have to understand that, yeah. you know, John is better than Susan is better than Andrea at this specific thing. So you're going to skill them with that. And to be able to identify who's good with what and then make sure the team's balanced. I mean, that sounds like something every leader should know. But if you walk up and you ask them how to do it, they're like, uh. <laughs> I know <laughs> exactly what you're saying. Yeah. So, so what we did was we took uh, from the show, we took a list of 70 different leadership skills that you actually need. And we teach them in their less than three minutes. And there's like three to four steps. So there's like a little story, three to four steps, and then the steps are the challenges so that you're just lifting a little leadership challenge every week mm -hmm. and it improves people. So like I'm, I'm personally very excited about it because I have had the opportunity. I've been taking my own leader bits. <laughs> okay. Like I do them myself. It's awesome, man. I should, uh, you should send me an invite. I want to try it now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just think about it. Cause like, You've what lived fifty two weeks in the past year, right? You do these little challenges ten ten minutes, and you'll see like in your history every single week you'll see this big build up of skills, and then as you interact with people, you'll be like, "Wow, I am way like I am more skilled by my own leader bits than just consuming audiobooks at like scale." Like I'm always consuming audiobooks. I don't watch. Uh, this past year, I haven't watched any TV or done anything other than listen to audiobooks for technology leadership and then, you know, work and things like that. And so this, this past year, I, I was so frustrated because, you know, the past 10, 10 months, I listened to a lot of stuff and I, I learned a thing or two. But then when the bits came up, every single week I'm doing them and like, oh my goodness. It's like a, like a person, like I used to be 300 pounds. Did you know this about me? No, I didn't. No, yeah. it doesn't so, look like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's what it's like for me. And now I'm, you know, like 160, 175 ish. But um, when, when I dropped all that weight, like you build this momentum with like, you feel a little bit better every day, you know, you look a little bit better every day and then it's like really addictive. And then you just end up being like fit and it's like, yeah, it takes some time, but, but man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about because I haven't been talking about it. Like I, the announcement goes today, and I just happen to be talking to you, so I'm really pumped up. <laughs> no, I'm I'm excited for you, and I hope uh, you know it it catches on and does well. Uh, and you know, I would love to see you share if you if you do get an opportunity to share it with me, and I would I'll try it. And I I don't know how 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 it works, but I'd love I'll take to take a look and. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's awesome. So you, did you have did you contemplate the idea of a co-founder? Uh I had uh at one point uh, in in the past worked uh, work with a with a partner. So uh, right now I have a you know a large a decent portion of the company is employee owned as well. So oh, very we, cool. but we uh you know, I, I did, uh, I did try that in the past. Uh, it, it has had mixed results. <laughs> so, uh, you know, as long, if you're aligned, then it works very well. Uh, 
like one of the ventures that is in Cincinnati, which is Inago, which is a rental uh, management platform company that I have a co-founder. I, uh, I, we work very well together. I love the guy <laughs> and we, we hit it off well. And he's taking, he's, he's taking the lead as the CEO on that. And I'm, I'm running the product and technology. So, that's awesome. So yes, uh, dip, not in Taza, but the companies that spin out, absolutely. There's somebody who I I try to partner with because realistically speaking, uh, you know, you only have so much bandwidth. So you you wanna you wanna bring in other people who have equal ownership and passion, just like you. It, so. Yeah. So yes, I have, and successfully in many a uh, couple of times, and not so successfully a couple of times. So, like everything, like, like everything in life. So now, do you do you typically work with like private equity, or do you self fund them, or how do you get your funding needs them out? Uh, so initially, we self fund them uh, during incubation until we gain some traction, get a couple of customers, and then we pitch it to. Uh, um, either existing customers who, who may have alignment or to uh, angels or, you know, so far we, so far we've been with angels and, uh, um, and uh, angel investment groups th that have helped us so far. So we've also pitched to like jumpstart and others uh, in the past, but we haven't uh, successfully got funded because uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it needed to be further along. That's why we, with one of the ventures, we are with an angel and the other one also will be probably looking at an angel for a seed round. So. so you have good relationships with them then? Yes, yes. Oh, uh, it's always yeah. good to you know great people. And right. And uh, it, it was, I think a lot of it, a lot of the investment, uh, at, at least at the initial stages, uh, while the idea is important and I'm sure in, in the Bay Area that that ecosystem is a lot more vibrant, but in Cleveland, it's a lot to do with the relations. And again, the companies that we funded, the investors were nowhere from Cleveland. They're all from like Austin or, you know, other, other towns. Uh, Cleveland is a little bit more conservative when it comes to investments. So <laughs> they want to, they, they, they want a lot more traditional, you know, it's almost like it's heavy with banking and medic, uh, you know, uh, medical. Uh, in the medical industries, are the two main ones I think are in the area. But they, in terms of investment, they're not. And there, there's some. Uh, I think TechStars did an evaluation of the area, and their reviews were scathing. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. but 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 that aside, uh, you know, there's a lot of good people in the in in the area. Who are trying to bring in change, and uh, you know, it's it's better. It's easy to criticize, but it's harder to make a change. And uh, I really appreciate Always. those leaders, so you know, who are trying to make a difference. So it's awesome. I love I love how you talk about leadership, and that you're not <laughs> like a complacent leader. That you're you're active and interested in it. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So far, I'm so excited. I'm going <laughs> to next year. You're going to be at, like 300, then a thousand, then ten thousand. <laughs> And, uh, uh, managing a, a lot of people gets a lot of you see the gray hair it's all because of <laughs> <laughs> all the interesting, and interesting dynamics that come about with uh, you know uh, as the team grows you know you i think at somebody i was talking to recently they said it, the challenge is in threes so when you're three people then when you get to you have to make changes and then when you get to 30 uh you know it's a different set of management skills when you get to you know, 90 or something, then there's more. And then it goes on that way somehow. So well, that, is, that is, that is, it's so much like that. That is the exact progression that you have as an account in leader bits. Okay. Not, <laughs> okay. You know, team member, leader, leader of leaders, C-level. So, yeah, no, I think that that would be interesting. I would love to see how you, you know, the, uh, I, I've been interested in a micro learning platform. Actually, we have our internal. Uh, we have uh, we have a we have. Hey, a, I'm going to take that. <laughs> yeah, please do. <laughs> so uh, we have a internal program that I am working with some of my uh, people to 
do exactly that, do micro learning. But if this one is already done and it's got the content as well, I would love to see how we could deploy it and if we can. What, you're already working on the, oh, you know, you're, you're the third, by the way, just so you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring some content. You're the third person to say this to me, by the way. We are not even thinking of uh, it as a product. We, ha we had a platform that we built called Pulsebox which was collecting social media inputs and then uh, building different feedback mechanisms using that. And that's where this idea evolved from for the team. And we actually did a partial implementation of it, but it's not, I, I wanted to actually talk to somebody who had an understanding of how to, uh, technology is the one piece of it. The second piece is actually, how, what is the course? How do you, you know, what is the sequence? There's content, right? There's content. What is the right lesson? What, what goes well with what? I mean, I can write a sequencing piece. I have already written the sequencing piece, but I needed to talk to like, uh, people who understand human psychology, who want, who've had the experience to tell me uh, we needed to bring that in. And that's where it kind of stalled a little bit because we had a certain growth spur, so to speak. So it kind of took a back, back seat. But uh, if you're already building it, I mean, I'd rather partner than reinvent if you've already got a lot of it. So, you know, why, why reinvent what I, if I can get that to my employees and they can start improving their life skills. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> why waste time with something else? <laughs> Right. So we found out, I'll, I'll share the research with you because we put it out, we have engineers on it, companies on it. And the idea was when I approached the other CTOs, I said, hey, we need to become a customer like today so that we have money so we could solve this problem. So I got people to become customers. Um, and so the, there's a couple aspects. The first one's points. So you get different rewards as you progress. So you can actually build momentum. So the more weeks successively that you continuously engage, the more yeah. reward you get for engaging with it. So you get bonuses for momentum. You get bonuses. Um, there's no, you don't have to log in. So it comes to you on email with uh, magic links, right? <laughs> Text messages. <laughs> yeah. Text no messages. app, nothing, nothing to download, no resistance. Correct. Exactly. Yeah, and there's no registration. So we like we just have the CTOs email me a spreadsheet of their people. And I put it in. And then I also built a feature because you know my background's Ruby development. So I'm a okay. developer Ooh. for 17 okay. years. I'm and busy. the um, I built a feature for local time zone. So based on where the user's time zone, they will get the the bit at the their specific time. So if the company says, Oh, we want them at like 3 p.m. on Fridays because that's when people have like most flex time. Mm -hmm. And so it goes at 3 p.m. on Fridays to everyone based on when it's 3 p.m. on Friday where they are. Okay. That was a lot of fun to build. It was hard to test, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of fun to build. <laughs> yeah. But that's cool though. That's really cool. I mean, uh, you know, um, if, if, if you, if you want to, you know, talk later more about that and how, if we can help or how we can, how we could use it and how it would help us. I would love to do that as well at a later date. So. Yeah. I, I'm also curious <laughs> like, the thought came up the other night about if micro learning platforms would be going to become a thing, like maybe you take the platform and like, that's a separate spin off business of letting people license the micro learning platform for their own micro content. Right. Right. Uh, oh. th there are, I think a few that I found, oh, there are? They, they were not the way I wanted it. I wanted it to be tracked to their uh, individual uh, goal setting that we want to do for people. So it has to kind of flow into their goal setting. And that's, that's where I think uh, integrating it, like the output from yours would simply flow into our HR system. So we don't have to, uh, you know, you know uh, we, they, when they log in, right now our HR system is useless. I mean, all they can see is they can apply for a leave or a vacation. And that's not what I want to motivate them to do. When they log in there, they can either apply for a leave or check some policy, which is useless, and maybe get their pay stub, yeah. which is, which is again, kind of uh, useless. What I would love to do is where they log in, they say, hey, today, this is your challenge. Think fresh, uh, you know, uh, build a positive mindset right at go. I mean, right from, uh, I, all, uh, I do spend some time, this is more on weekends, on the whole experience of an employee from the time he walks in to, to the time he leaves, all his interactions and uh, all the work that he does 
uh, all the in, everything from the environment, work, uh, people interaction, uh, uh, you know, interaction with leadership, interaction with peers. Uh, how can I make sure that each of these is excellent so they can only be, you know, promoting us and we can keep attracting better and better talent. It's like that, a customer journey, but for your employees. Yes, customer journey. Like, but, and I want to make sure that and I, I care deeply about my uh, team members. Uh, you know, even though I'm remote, I think I have a good pulse on where they are mentally. Uh, but uh, I want to make sure that you know they have the right experience. Even you know whether they're there in India or here. So, this is a part of that. Uh, you know, this micro learning piece is a piece in this, what I call them. So we've seen a marked difference between millennials and the older, older generation, <laughs> where, which, which has a, which have different values so, and their attention is uh, limited to, so as I call the Twitter attention span, <laughs> we need to keep the learning brief and then reinforce it with actual actions, which, which is what you're saying exactly. So that's pretty interesting. So. Yeah, it's just effective too. Yes, like, it is a lot more effective. That that's that's what I I I'm an I'm a I'm an engineer. I'm a nerd, man. I wanted to I, if I'm going to spend my time doing something, I want it to pay off. Yeah, yep, yep. So, man, I, I didn't even expect the conversation to take that turn. So, that was exciting. <laughs> I, I'm so glad that you're in. Look at the, you've, you've worked on micro learning and you've actually pursued this exact you know concept of the the content. Yeah, the 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 content was just because you know, you, uh, it's like a statistics thing. You mm -hmm. hear the same advice and the same lessons come up. If you talk to, you know, you, if you talk, if you cleared your entire schedule and talked to 130, 140 CTOs in the next <laughs> year, the answer would be very, very clear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, yeah. no, I, all right. This is great. So when people want to, they're going to hear you, they're going to love you. They want to know more. Where do you hang out? Twitter, LinkedIn? Uh, I am, on LinkedIn and uh, I, ha I have a Twitter handle as well. So it's just uh, uh, Yasser Rabu, one word. So, but I would, you know, I, I'm, I'm socially shy. <laughs> yeah, no, so I, I, I keep, I keep, I keep a lower, I, I get a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, my sales team is like, you need to be out there more and <laughs> be talking to more people. But, uh, but uh, you know, if there's an interesting conversation to be had, I was very excited to uh, talk to you. I, I got a little input from my team member about you. And so here we are. So nice. I'm always excited to talk to everybody. Like, and then if you ever, um, you know, the, the speaking stuff, you, your information that you have is incredibly valuable just by sharing your experience. There's someone out there that is just a solo developer yeah, who sure. wants to learn. I mean, you've built the entire company if, if you share that it's actually i'm gonna take it a step further it's your responsibility <laughs> to, share. to share it is like yeah. in our and if you boil it down to our actual dna have you ever you're an intelligent um educated individual you have a phd right so if you actually look how dna copies itself it literally like copies itself it passes information yeah, down a chain yes so at our most human basic building block what we do is pass information down from one generation to mm -hmm. another generation so it's your responsibility in society to do it it is i mean if we didn't do that we wouldn't evolve right we would be that doing exactly still we would be still hacking at stones <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna go eat some bananas for lunch okay <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, thank you so, this has been a great conversation uh, it's yeah. been a pleasure talking to you as well Joel.